Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Well today I played with all sorts of makeup so I could make this holiday face happen. Do you do that? Do you like pre-plan your makeup for upcoming events like Christmas, New Year's, Tuesday on the couch? If you do, then we're kindred spirits. To all those of you who are new to my channel, hello, my name is Jennifer. As you can tell, I'm into all things hair, skin, and makeup. Well, the hair, forgive me for that today. If those are things that you're into, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I have so much mess for you to go through. Seriously, I'm a janky girl and this is a messy channel. So if you're feeling this holiday face that I'm giving you, do me a favor, hit that like button and keep watching and I'll show you how I made it happen. God, I'm such a dork. All right, are you ready to see how I did this? Keep watching. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is prime. I'm gonna be using one of my beloved primers from Makeup Forever. This is the Smoothing Primer. There's a bunch of different primers in this range for all different concerns. I like this one because I think it's perfect for me for doing any pore filling, filling in those areas on the side of my nose, filling in my 11s, anywhere I have texture. It just helps smooth and even out my skin surface and really helps my foundation be on top and not collect in those areas, but just kind of glide over and make it a nicer application. Well, hey Griffers, nice to see you. And as always, when using your primer, you need to let it set up. Put it on and then go do something else. I'm gonna do my brows after I put this on because I need the primer to have its moment. She just has to like get herself together, firm up and be who she's meant to be so that everything else works on top of it. Because if you don't let your uh, primer have its time and you just go right over the top, you're not getting the full benefits of the primer. So let me quick put this on. All right, next up is my new favorite duo from Makeup by Mario. I use the Master Hold Brow Gel, it's a clear. And from the Master Blade Brow Pencil, I use the shade Light Brunette. Now I've been watching his videos like a crazy person. I've just been like taking in as much as I can because his techniques, he's like a painter. I mean, he's like, a, he's, he's a real makeup artist. And the way he does things, well, let's face it, the faces that he turns out crush me. I'll never be able to do that because I'm not a makeup artist, but also I don't have his hands. Like he, his pressure, the way he holds products, the way he, you know, lightly feathers in, that's something that happens because of his hands. Those will never be my hands. So I've been trying to at least mimic what he's doing. Now I've seen him very often go in with the brow blade lightly, just putting in a little bit of color. And then he goes over top with this. Now I've seen some people feel like it doesn't really hold. And at first I was having that feeling a little bit until I realized what I was doing wrong. The way Mario uses this is he lets it just be in the air for like 30 seconds. He wants it to get tacky. It's almost like when you apply lashes, you need your lash glue to get tacky before you apply it. Same thing with this. And then he goes from the back of the brow, ooh, hair, from the back of the brow in, and then combs it through both ways to really coat the hairs. And then he combs the shape of the brow that he wants. That has made a world of difference for me. So I'm gonna start off and do that first. All right, so just coloring, filling in, adding some actual color to these brows. Okay, so for adding color, that's enough for right now. I'm gonna go in, like I told you, with the Master Hold Brow Gel. And you can see it is already like a sticky consistency to begin with, but I just wanted to get a little tackier so it coats very evenly and holds these bishes in place. And then all I do is I just go from the bottom forward, just messing these brows up, just getting them coated all over. And then I'm gonna go back in the direction that I want them to actually be going and coat them with both sides of the brush. You can see there's a short side of the brush and a longer bristled side. The short side is nice for really guiding the hairs exactly where you want them to go. And I just keep going over it because most of my hairs, they're just rogue. They just wanna do what they friggin' wanna do. So I keep manipulating them while the gel is setting up. And usually they stay in place. 
All right, now they're both basically in place. They aren't going to move. Now we're gonna leave these brows and we're gonna move on to complexion. Now my favorite thing to do, because Mario does it, is he does cut out the brow, where is it? Oh, with concealer. And I've been finding that it really does make my brows look much cleaner. And especially since like I don't have a lot of hair, it's nice to really like carve it out, define the area, so it gives them a little more of a presence. Now I'm gonna use the same concealer that I'm gonna use on my eyes. This is from Armani. This is the Luminous Silk Concealer in the shade 4.75. And I like using a wider brush like this because it helps me fan and feather out the concealer. Now, can you see a difference right off the bat? I can. All right, I'm gonna finish up my complexion products with my Armani concealer, and I'm going to use from Maybelline, this is the Dream Radiant Liquid uh, Foundation that I had tried out a few weeks, months ago, who even knows anymore. Does time mean anything to anyone? Not to me. This, I have been enjoying the hell out of it. So let me get my complexion on and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I have my complexion on and pretty well blended, I'm gonna go in with the bronzer. This is the Power Bronzer in the shade Light from Danessa Myricks. This is a cream bronzer, as you can tell. I've been using it. It looks a little messy on the inside. That's okay. I love it. Now, I love using uh, this brush. This is from Laura Lee Cosmetics. This is her, what is it, the L22 brush. I just love the shape of it. It's a fluffy fan brush, but it's not like super, super big. There are some that are really big. My face is not enormous, so using giant brushes sometimes just gets too much product in too many places. So something like this really just fits right in on my cheekbone, coming around my forehead, and right up here. It's just the size is perfect for me. And this Danessa Myricks bronzer, which is just such a lovely formula, Oh, these two just work like a dream together. All right, just blend this in. Make sure it is nice and seamless with all of my other cream products. And then to do a little setting, I'm going to use from Beauty Bakery. This is their flower setting powder. This is in the shade Oat Translucent. I was late to the game on this, but I have not put it down since. I, I just love it. It is, I think it is probably one of the lightest powders I have ever used. All right, tap this in, make sure there are no creases, and go girl. And I like going around the nose because it really does help set and keep things locked in place. Oh, how pretty is that? It's just, it's so light and so soft, but it doesn't look heavy or cakey. It's just this perfect, soft little powder that just locks things in. It's so, oh, so good. All right, now to lock in my bronzer from Dior, I'm using the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. This is in the shade 3N Neutral. This powder is very cool. You can use it for lots of things. I bought it in the darker shade to use it for bronzing. You can use it, I mean, if this is your skin tone, you can use it for setting. You can use it for whatever you want. It has the most lovely, while well, she's searching for a brush, it has the most lovely blurring properties. It's a very soft powder. I mean, it just, I don't even know, even know if that's going to show up for you as anything, but it just is so smoothing and blurring. It's not heavy or cakey. It's so lovely. And actually, I've been meaning to get it in a lighter shade so I could use it for setting or for touch up. And I just I keep forgetting all right, let's just set the bronzer with this nice warm powder. Mm. Oh. Yes, Miss Dottie Marie. I really like having the two layers of bronzer. I just think that the cream bronzer just melts in and works so beautifully with my foundation. But I do like to lock it down. I don't want it, you know, moving or disappearing over the day. And so I think going over the top with another bronzing powder just it makes for like wearability, durability, long lasting. And I think it gives a little more, it seems like it gives a little more dimension to the face. I don't know. Maybe I'm just kidding myself, but I like it. So I'm going to keep on doing it. And apparently Miss Dottie Marie wants to go outside. But just a quick blend before I do. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Where was I? Now, because I really like for my makeup to last, 
I take a powder puff. This one here we can no longer get from Tidy Beauty. It's her Blendiful, I think it was called. And I just press the powder into the puff using the cap. I just want to get it in there. And then I also take and just kind of move it around in the puff. And then I'm just going to go in the areas that I really want to make sure are set. All right, next up, cheeks. And because I'm gonna have more of a dramatic look and kind of a dramatic eye, I want a neutral cheek. So from Makeup by Mario, again, I have the Soft Pop Powder Blush Mellow Mauve. Now, when I saw it online, I was like, mauve, that's usually like too like coolish grayish for my skin. This is not mauve at all. This is like a light, sheer, peachy pink that just kind of, like it enlivens your face. It doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't do what I normally think mauve does. So I'm just gonna tap my brush on both sides, kind of load it up a little bit and then tap off the excess. Give myself a little smile and go on the tops of the apples of my cheeks and like up along my cheekbones. So you can see straight off, that is just a little bit of brightening. It's not overpowering, because you know I love to overpower myself with some blush. And I don't find it to be mauve. So sometimes the names can throw you off a little bit. You really got to try sometimes in store and see what the shades really are. You know, that's why I love myself a Sephora. Seriously, wouldn't I be their best PR person ever? Mm, so pretty. This hair, on the other hand. Now, before I go in on the eyes with really what's going to be a simple look, I'm going to go back in to my master blade and I'm just going to touch up. Now, I like to get these areas like on the inside of my brow and add a couple more brow hairs because she needs it. And I'm just going to touch up around the edges and see if there are any spots that need to be filled in. This is nice because my brows are like set. They are not moving. So just lightly going over the top really doesn't do any sort of damage. And it really helps me, since I have a shape, it really helps me see where I need to add or fix. Now I'm still nowhere near, nor will I ever be anywhere near the skills that Mario has, but his products are really helping like my brow game especially. Don't go back and look at my old videos because, well, it was scary. But I'm getting there. I am getting there. Just ask my friend Lynn, she'll tell you. All right, next up, of course, I'm gonna prime with my painterly paint pot. This one is almost empty, I have hit pan. Of course I have another one waiting in the wings, but I will never not use this. She just owns my heart. I just, she never ever does me wrong. Always cancels out any color that I have on my lids. Gives me a nice, flat, even surface to work on helps my shadows last so long. I just hope MAC never stops making this. It's so, it's a staple. All right, so when I think of holiday eyes, I think of actually something that is kind of dramatic, but in a light, sparkly way. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. I'm mainly gonna focus on doing a contoured eye look and then adding some shimmer, because you know, like if it's snowing, of course I want my eyes to glisten and glow like that twinkling snow falling from the sky. So for my transition and like upper lid color, I'm using this shade here from my new Instant Eye Palette from Charlotte Tilbury. As I've been using this, like it is just the most beautiful shade. It blends in so perfectly. It's a beautiful highlight. It's smooth. I just love it. And it's one of those shades that I wish they would have made much bigger in the um, palette because it's gonna get used a ton by me. And it's also one of those shades that I wish that they would just make as a single. Like I would, I would spend the Charlotte Tilbury money to get that in a much bigger pan all by itself. I'm sure to you right now, you're like, um, girl, I don't see anything. Don't worry, I do. Now, because I want to have a more contoured eye, I'm gonna use my Wayne Goss, the Radiance Boosting Face Palette in light gold, bronze and sculpt. So it does have a bronzing shade and has a sculpting shade, which is this nice, like cooler taupey shade. And this will be perfect for giving myself that, well, lid that seems to be gone. My eye has become more and more hooded. As a matter of fact, I almost have no lid left. So it's having me try to figure out different techniques so that I can use the lid space that I have because 
if I just, you know, use my movable lid and put all the shit color on there, when my eyes open, you don't really see it. So I have to start and really carve out more of the lid space for me so that I get to show off the pretty colors. But, but in the meantime, that is a trial and error project. So today doing this contouring is the first step in really getting used to that. Now, as you can see, I'm going up high. I'm using this cooler shade, which is going to give me not only shape, but it's going to make it look like there's a shadow from my lid, which there's not. And I'm going to pull it out a little bit towards the tail of my eyebrow, just so that it gives a little bit of a lift to my eye. All right, can you see already from one side to the other that doing that is starting to give me what looks like more lid space, but really isn't. All right, now I'm going to take this on the outer corner and I'm going to bring it up and connect it to the top so that in theory, it looks like my lid is much bigger than it really is. Now, this is something that you really want to keep in a defined space. You're not going to want to use a bigger um, brush that's going to fluff powder everywhere. You really want to keep the space very defined. And here again, this is one of those things where I'm used to like lifting my eyebrows so I can see and have more space. I don't want to do that. I want to keep my eyes rested so that I can actually just work in the space that I can see. I don't want to work in this space down here that's like hidden. I want to do my work where I'm going to be able to, you know, fool myself into thinking that I actually have more lid than I do. All right, I'm going to go a little bit out of order before I continue on. I'm going to tight line. Normally, back in the day, I would have done a really pretty black winged eyeliner, but because I'm losing this lower lid space, it is really hard to get a pretty winged liner. And honestly, at Christmas time, I actually have less time to get ready for things. I'm spending way more time getting the house ready, getting, you know, cookies out, whatever, just getting prepared for guests, that I have less time to get ready for me. So I'm doing the things that are Still gonna give me a dramatic eye look, but not as dramatic if I was gonna take the God knows how long to perfect a wing. So I'm going to tight line with my Patrick Ta. This is in the shade Rich Brown. This is the Precision Gel Eyeliner. And I have become a huge fan of this because not only does it go on very easily in my waterline, which creeps me out normally, but it stays and it really helps darken up my lash line and adds that little extra drama and depth that my lashes need. All right, now that my lash line is darkened up, we can go over the top with the star of the show. This is from Iconic London. This is the Glaze Crayon in the shade Champagne, I think it is. Yeah, so this is interesting because it's dual ended, so yay, multi-purpose. This is on the crayon end, which is this beautiful light golden champagne. And then on the other end, we have our cream. Now, normally I was going to use just this on its own, but I'm wondering, should I use the champagne and go over top of the crayon with this here glaze? Hmm, what do we want to do? You know what, I think I'm gonna stick with using just the cream end. Um, yeah, because I don't think I want that actual gold undertone. I wanna keep it like light, neutral, snow-like. Ugh, sure is pretty though. Don't worry, she'll get used in the future. All right, I'm actually going to put it on a brush first so I can do the outline of like the arched area, get it precisely where I want it to be. Let's just get a little bit off there. I don't wanna go in too hard. Now I wanna go right under where I did the contouring shade so that it really is raising my eyelid and giving me more lid space. And I'll just make a nice semicircle there. And I now have the outline that I can fill in. Now, you don't have to have this exact thing to do this. If you have any sort of glitter shimmer shades in your palettes, 
and honestly, how do you get away with not having those? Please. You can just wet them. You can wet your brush and then put it into the shimmer and you will have the exact same effect. And actually wetting it will help it adhere better and last longer. Or you can actually use one of my favorite new things, the Intensifies from Pat McGrath. This is a miracle. I will show you someday how I use this. But if you don't have a liquid shimmer shade, you can definitely put this on and then go over the top with whatever shimmer powder you have. And it is beyond gorgeous. I am looking nice and shimmery, ah, but in a subtle snowy kind of way. And now because I am that little bit extra, I'm going to put a little more on my brush and go right under my lash line just to give a little bit of glimmer. Not a lot, just a little. And now I'm going to go back into my Wayne Goss palette and just make sure everything is still looking contoured like I have a shape. All right, and now to give my eye just a little more definition around the lash line, I'm gonna go in my Makeup by Mario palette and I'm going to use this very dark brown here. This is going to go right in the lash line to just give a little more definition and deepen that up. And I don't wanna use a black because it's just, it's too harsh on me sometimes. And I just, I'm not feeling black today. This deep, rich brown is exactly what works perfectly on my pale skin with my blue eyes so I'm not looking like just harsh Ooh, we're getting there I promise we're getting there all right before we do lashes I do want to do my finishing powder today I'm going to use from Giorgio Armani this is the luminous silk glow fusion powder I have it in the shade 2 it is just a lovely finishing powder it gives that nice kind of soft can you even see it? Gives that like soft veil effect that I like to have. It just smooths and silkens everything. Oh, but you know, what? before I do that, I almost forgot. I'm gonna go in with my YSL Touche Eclat 3D All Over Glow. This is in the shade Universal. I have been using the piss out of this ever since I saw uh, Lisa J talk about it on her channel. This is one of those like subtle, like what is she doing? What is that? But it just makes a difference. You can use this all over your face. Today, I'm gonna to use it as my highlighter, I'm going in with my favorite highlighting brush so far of all times. This is the Laura Lee Los Angeles L25. Such a good brush. I, I don't have anything else like this and it's perfect for highlight. So you can already see where there's like a natural highlight happening. I'm just gonna go over top of that just to intensify a little bit. Not too dramatic because the eyes are sparkly, the lips are gonna be red. So we don't wanna like overpower, but I do want to have just a little bit of extra glow. This is a magical powder because even though I'm able to give myself a highlight with it, when you use a big fluffy brush, it just gives this subtle, gorgeous glow that's not like strobing, it's not glittery, it's just so beautiful. But when you use it on a dense brush like this and just put it in targeted areas, you get a pretty, a pretty highlight. And I like to do it before I do my finishing powder because I feel like the finishing powder just helps bring everything together. So if I'm a little too glowy from my highlighter, that'll fix it. All right, let's just give a little tap with my beauty blender to make sure it's pressed in. All right, I'm just going to use this large fluffy brush. I mean, I just load it up, tap it off, and just go over. It just is such a pretty finish. So, mm, so pretty. And because I am who I am, I'm gonna go in with just a touch more blush. There we go. Seriously, this hair. Mm. Now, because my eye is so sparkly, I would normally, to highlight the inner corner, use a bright white like this one here in the Mario palette. But because this is a holiday look, I am going to go in with my Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. This is the loose highlighter in the shade Extra. You know I love using this. And, well, since it's a, you know, holiday look, a little more sparkle isn't going to kill me. But just a little. Just a little. 
Now, before I do my lips and my eyes, I am gonna do my setting spray. Um, I don't like to have my mascara on when I put my setting spray on because sometimes you can get transfer if you blink or sneeze or God knows what happens. So I do like to mascara after setting spray. Now this one from Nimia, this is like glue for your face. Once this is on, your makeup is set for hours and that's why mm, I'm in love with it. Now I just sprayed, so I'm going to just Tap it in, make sure it's evenly distributed, and then I'm going to use my favorite little Nimia fan. All right, let's do mascara. I am going to be a little extra today. I'm sure you figured that already. I'm going to use from Bite. This is the Upswing Full Volume Mascara in the shade, I don't know, I think it's only in one shade. You know, I've been using this for months. I love it. It gives a very thick, voluminous, long, dramatic lash. Now, I have found that it is, there's just too much product on here. And normally, I don't do this with other mascaras, but with this one, I do. I wipe off some of the extra mascara because it just, sometimes it's just too much. All right, lashes curled, and let's get this on. Now, of course, using falsies might be a good way to go especially since I'm not doing a winged eyeliner. And I may do that on Christmas Eve. I'm not sure yet. Depends on how much time I have when I'm getting ready. But right now, this particular mascara from Bite is pretty dramatic. So I'm going to see how it, this goes on my, you know, trial run for Christmas Eve. I, I just love this mascara. It's so freaking good. All right, so that is one coat. Now, I actually don't want my lower lashes to be as dramatic. I want them to be a little more refined. I think that would be pretty with this look. So I'm going to use, this is Addison Ray's brand. This is the Lash Snack Lengthening Mascara. This is in the shade Midnight Mood, which I think is the only black shade. I'm not sure. This is a really nice mascara. And on the bottom lashes, it'll be, it'll give me some color but it's not gonna make them super voluminous, which is what I'm looking for. I almost forgot, I want to highlight under my brow bone, and I've been using lately from Patrick Ta, this is his Precision Gel Liner in the shade Cream. It's the exact same thing as the rich brown that I used in my waterline, except in a cream shade. Now, I'm sure he made this for people to be able to use in their waterline to brighten. That's actually not a cute look on me, so. When Tati talked about using this to highlight her brow bone, I was like, yes, that's exactly what I need. Because my problem is that, well, you know, lack of lid space and sometimes the high lit brow just isn't served appropriately. So using this cream gel eyeliner, it's so creamy and it just gives the nicest little highlight to my brow. You may not notice it, but can you tell a difference from one eye to the other? This one has it, this one doesn't. I think it makes just the most subtle yet pretty difference. All right, so the last thing we gotta do is lips. And of course I wanna wear a red lip. I don't do it that often. And actually, I've been trying to figure out why it hasn't been right lately, and I think I figured it out. Whenever I see someone on Instagram or YouTube putting on a bright red lip, they usually, I've been noticing, appear to have lip filler. And when you have lip filler, it just plumps everything out, it smooths out those lines, and it makes for just the most beautiful canvas for lips. If you just have regular, everyday, God-given lips, it's a little harder to get that beautiful look. So I've been trying a couple different techniques, and I think I found what's working best for me right now. Now, normally I prefer a matte lipstick, but I've been wanting more of a creamy texture. I just don't like the feeling of matte sometimes, and I'm not feeling that right now. So I picked up from Armani Beauty. This is their, what is it called? Lip Power in the shade 400. Now, not only is it a great shade of red, I mean, right? But it's creamy, but it also has this fantastic shape to it. See that point? That is everything. That is so important. Most lipsticks, you don't have to be so incredibly precise. Red, you do. And having that point 
makes it so much easier. All right, so first I'm gonna go in with Petra Ta. This is his lip liner in the shade, I think it's, that's why she's late. It's the Precision Lip Crayon. This is a fun little thing. I used it before in another video a long time ago. Like I say, I don't use reds that often. I do gravitate to the same like tone of red, so this lip liner is perfect. I love that it has the little clicky to get the product to come up. It has a nice shape to it. This is matte and I'm going to use it all over my lips. I'm going to line and fill in. And this is gonna take a minute because it's red and you don't wanna fuck it up. I feel like I need to listen to some Yanni and do some yoga before I do this. Oh, and I have had this on my lips the whole time I've been getting ready. This is from Sephora. This is their Lip Sleeky Sleeping Mask in the shade Vanilla. It keeps my lips nice and smooth while I'm putting my makeup on, so I don't need to do another prep with the red. So here we go. Now, my natural lip line is faded at the corners, but it is like further out. I'm actually going to cheat that and I will fill it in with concealer. Because if I didn't, if I actually followed my real lip line, it would come out further and I would look kind of like a clown. So in order to have like a prettier pout, I have to cheat. All right, and like I said, I'm going to fill in completely with the lip liner. That's actually gonna help this creamier lipstick last longer. And honestly, if I wanted to, I could just leave it like this and let that be my lip color for the day. I could put gloss on it, I could leave it matte like this, but I wanna try this lipstick because the formula is fantastic. I love the shape of it. It's a pretty color. We're moving on. We're using lipstick. That is pretty though. I'm actually going to twist this up higher than I normally would a lipstick because I want to be able to have this space with the pointed end for really getting on my lower lip because I don't want this rounded end because I'm that would really take me out of the lines. I really want to use this pointier end for getting along the outside of my lip. At least this isn't going to be as stressful as the lip liner was. But I'm still going to take it slow. See, I'm turning it around. And I'm going to go close to the lip liner. And then I can turn it back and fill in. Mm, that shade is beautiful. Okay, so I'm doing that thing. Ma, ma, ma. I'm going to take a clean tissue and just gently dab. I don't want to have excess that's going to be able to like move at all and smear, so I just want to dab off a little bit of the excess. There, just a little. All right, I am going to clean up with concealer. I have this very stiff, cheap angled brush. I'm going to put the concealer on my hand. I'm going to put the brush in the concealer, load it up back and forth, then kind of swipe it off a little bit. And I'm just going to go along where I told you I had to cheat because of my lip line and just fill that in. No, nope, this brush ain't cutting it. No, nope, I have this nice little concealer brush here. Let's just use this. There, do you see how they just cleaned that up and you don't see my natural lip line there anymore? Oh, and I have some smudging over here. <sighs> First, I wanna try and remove with a Q-tip. There we go, nice and crisp. Mm. Well, it took us some time to get here, but I am pretty pleased with this. I mean, this is a holiday looking face if I have ever seen one on me. A couple things that I always do at the end, I take my little powder puff and I go over any areas where there's shine where I don't want there to be to just take it down a little bit. Take in the overall situation, see if there's anything that needs to be blended or touched up. Uh, in this case, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I am really liking, you know, my overall pastiness being complemented by this bright red lip. I still have a dark lash line. There's no winged eyeliner because I don't think there's really room for it at this point in my life, but Overall, the lashes using the upswing full volume from Bite really are giving me the effect that I want. Now, like I said, I could use falsies if I really wanted to take it to the next level. That's not where I am today, maybe tomorrow. So I know I used a ton of products to get to this place and you don't have to. Honestly, maybe you just wanna throw on some lashes in the red lip. I bet you could do that. Me, I need a little more help. 
So tell me what you think. Do you like this holiday glam red lip on me? Are you thinking it's for me or are you like, girl, no, no. I'm kind of feeling it. All right, friends. Well, if you enjoyed seeing my holiday makeup tutorial, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, shh, keep it to yourself. <laughs> All right, friends, as usual, I will have all of the products I use listed in the box below. They are all non-affiliate codes. They are just there for your convenience to get you right to the areas where I purchased them. If you stuck with me and made it till this point in the video, do me a favor and drop a lipstick emoji in the comments below. I want to know who my holiday makeup folks are. All right, friends, as always, I want to thank you so much for being with me. Happy holidays, and I'll see you real soon. Mm -hmm.